Senior BJP leader Bhupendra Patel to succeed Vijay Rupani as the Chief Minister of Gujarat. He is to be sworn in tomorrow. The guidelines for issuing a COVID death certificate are out. The government informs the Supreme Court after being rebuked by the top court and asked to pull up its socks. Don't lose hope. The Chief Minister Stalin tells students after a neat aspirant dies by suicide, a medical aspirant, the son of a farm labourer, was found dead hours before the neat exam was to take place. A day after a 34-year-old woman died after she was brutally raped in Sakinaka, another incident of sexual abuse reported in Ulasnagar, Two police stations reportedly didn't file the girl's complaint on the ground that the crime did not take place in their jurisdiction. More details emerge on what caused the Air India Express crash in Koi Code. Apart from a serious pilot error, the AI crash report says unprescribed drugs may have impaired the pilot. The Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister sets the tone for next year's state elections with a blatant communal remark claiming that Muslims ate up all the rations meant for Hindus. After a Kolkata flyover features in the UP Chief Minister's Adityanath development advertisement, the Trinamool is in splits. The newspaper apologises, claiming they made the inadvertent mistake. Hello and welcome to the News at 8. I'm Sarah Jacob. The top story right now, senior BJP leader Bhupendra Patel, known to be a protege of the former Chief Minister Anandi Ben Patel, will be succeeding Vijay Rupani as the Chief Minister of Gujarat. Now, while he was elected the leader of the Legislative Party after a meeting uh, and, you know, unanimously, it is believed that he is the choice of Prime Minister Modi and the Home Minister Amit Shah. Mr. Rupani, who was present, at the occasion, endorsed the new chief minister, saying the party will successfully contest the polls under his leadership. Elections in Gujarat are due next year. Bhartiya Janta Party, our Sirs Netrutva, has taken this decision. Bhupendra Bhai is in the future, and the future of the future of the future of the Bhartiya Janta Party अच्छी तरह से जीतेगी हमें सबको पूर्ण विश्वास मैं सबसे पहले मान्य नरेंद्र भाई मान्य नड्डा जी और अमित भाई शाह साहब का तहे दिल से आभार मानना चाहता हूं और गुजरात प्रदेश के सभी वरिष्ठ नेता मान्य सी आर पाटिल साहब और हमारे विजय भाई साहब की टीम का सबका मैं तहे दिल से धन्यवाद मानता हूं मेरे पर जो विश्वास रखा है वो विश्वास को बिना टूटे हुए विकास के जो काम बाकी है वो आगे बढ़ाएंगे और साथ में संगठन को साथ में लेके आगे बढ़ाएंगे थैंक यू मिस्टर रूपानी इज नाउ द फोर्थ head of a BJP rule state to be replaced to lose his job this year and this is a change of guard ahead of the assembly polls next year allegedly because of uh, Rupani's uh, lackluster administration especially during the horrific second wave when the situation in Ahmedabad spiraled out of control and the state's health services were stretched as hospitals ran out of beds and essential medical supplies amidst rising cases and deaths. But the Amadmi Party claims that their presence in Gujarat is another crucial factor behind this change of guard. Surat ke logo ne Arvind Kejriwal ki Amadmi Party ko vote diya. Aur ye isle diya kyunki Amadmi Party ek umid hai. Aur isi liye Bhajpa majboor hui apne Mukhya Mantri ko badalne ke liye. Aur isi liye ek helpless Chief Minister ko hata kar aane wale chunavon se pehle नेमप्लेट बदलने की कोशिश बीजेपी कर रही है 
नेम प्लेट बदलने से लोगों के मन में बीजेपी को बदलने के जो भाव हैं वो द स्वेरिंग इन टुमारो आफ्टरनून इज व्हाट वी बीन गिवन टू अंडरस्टैंड बाय यू नो द बीजेपी लीडर्स मिस्टर पटेल विल आल्सो हैव टू डिसाइड ऑन हिज न्यू कैबिनेट वी आर गिवन टू अंडरस्टैंड मोस्ट ऑफ द ओल्ड फेसेस विल कंटिन्यू बट देयर माइट बी सम चेंजेस वी आर आल्सो बीइंग गिवन टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट मिस्टर नितिन पटेल माइट कंटिन्यू एज यू नो डेप्यूटी a uh, chief minister so this is what the deal is at this point now more importantly why has the bjp chosen mr patel he's in well he's an anandi ben patel loyalist remember anandi ben patel also belongs to the patel community but mr bhupendra patel belongs to the pop, uh, you know patel community and the bjp is depending on caste equations to perform well in the next elections the patel community which form a sizable portion of the voters and also are a very very powerful uh, you know factor in the caste equations in gujarat have been somewhat disappointed with the bjp to address that this decision has been taken mr bhupendra patel has been uh, chosen uh, to lead gujarat to be the chief minister and lead the party into the next elections uh, with the congress and the aam aadmi party perhaps now a third player emerging emerging in uh, gujarat but apart from that there are two things that this decision makes clear one mr narendra modi and mr amit shah still call the shots in gujarat all decisions are taken by them when it comes to gujarat and two even though the bjp denies that it does not believe in caste equations in its electoral strategy that is not reality in fact it very much depends on caste equations especially in states like gujarat which has been its stronghold these are the two factors that have been established by this decision and of course mr patel will meet uh, is meeting the governor and also he will be sworn in as chief minister on monday in the current scheme of things in the bjp to give it uh, the sense of a perfect you know sort of handing over of the baton uh, it was mr vijay rupani who proposed the name of bhupendra patel and uh, you know we were uh, doing a live in fact i was live with you in the evening when that name was announced uh, as soon as that name came from inside uh, you know uh, of course it was a surprise because that name hadn't been really discussed uh, earlier in the name but then we were also told that be prepared for a surprise so that's exactly what happened uh, mr rupani of course says that he will work together with mr bhupendra patel and under bhupendra patel's leadership they believe they will uh, you know win the next elections but that's something that the you know only uh, time will tell the bjp stronghold is gujarat amit shah and narendra modi are still in charge caste equations are still at play and a year after 21 people were killed in the crash involving a boeing 737 aircraft in koikod The Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau or AAIB has released its final investigation report into the deadly crash. Vishnu Som poured over this 250 page report and here are some of its troubling findings. The probable cause of the accidents was the non-adherence to standard operating procedures by the pilot wherein he continued an unstabilized approach and landed beyond the touchdown zone halfway down the runway despite a go around call by the other pilot which warranted a mandatory go around and the failure of the other pilot to take over controls and execute a go around now what exactly does this mean well this means that the pilot who was flying the aircraft an experienced commander failed to adhere to a basic warning instead of aborting his landing he chose to go ahead and touch down on a wet runway in heavy wind and rain in fact the report says the pilot in command had vast experience at landing at kodi kod under similar weather conditions this experience might have led to overconfidence leading to complacency and a state of reduced conscious attention that would have seriously affected his actions making decision making possibly problematic worryingly the report says the pilot was on medication which may have affected his judgment it says in a quote the pilot in command was taking multiple unprescribed anti diabetic drugs that could have probably caused subtle cognitive deficits due to mild hypoglycemia now the role of air traffic control has also been criticized they apparently provided inaccurate information about the poor weather conditions at the time 
The report says prevailing surface winds were much stronger than the winds reported by ATC. The digital flight data recorded of the aircraft analysis of that confirms tailwinds of 16 knots when the aircraft was approximately 30 feet over the runway. Now these tailwinds would have pushed the aircraft down the length of the runway. In fact, that's exactly what happened. The aircraft floated without touching down. When it did touch down, it was too late to stop safely. Finally, the role of the management of the airline has been criticized. The report says the actions and decisions of the pilot in command were steered by a misplaced motivation to land back at Cody Code to operate the next day morning. The unavailability of sufficient numbers of captains at Cody Code was the result of faulty Air India Express human resources policy. Now, for the families of those who have lost the lives of those they love, this series of failures simply unacceptable. My sister Sahira Banu and her three kids were travel in that flight, and my sister and her younger child lost their lives. Inquiry report stated that the wrong decision by the pilot caused the accident. It also blamed the co-pilot's lack of assertiveness and the poor crew scheduling policy of the airline. The union ministry also liable to answer the situation as Air India's Press Limited comes under the Civil Aviation Department. It is quite sad to say still union government didn't give any solution to any of the victims. Seven members from my family was were travelling in this particular ill-fated flight and they all were seriously injured and now they are coming back to their li normal life. As per the report, the accident was caused due to the non-adherence of SOP by the captain and also he ignored the go-around call by the first officer and the particular flight was part of the Vande Bharat mission. I would say that Air India Express and Union Government is an equally responsible for this incident. And smarting a day after a day of uh, ridicule over a goofed up newspaper advertisement, the UP Chief Minister Dithyanath has set the tone for next year's state elections with a blatantly communal remark. <laughs> And Trinamool Congress leaders are calling out a front page newspaper advertisement by the UP government which was titled Transforming Uttar Pradesh under the Adityanath uh, uh, Chief Minister except that the picture shown is that of the famous Ma flyover in Kolkata. And uh, Mamta Banerjee's nephew and the Trinamool leader Abhishek Banerjee was among the first to tweet transforming UP for the uh, Adityanath government means stealing images from infrastructure seen in Bengal under Mamta Banerjee's leadership and using them as his own. Looks like the double engine model has miserably failed in BJP's strongest state and now stands exposed for all. Mukul Roy also tweeted that uh, Prime Minister Modi is so helpless to save his party that apart from changing chief ministers, he's also had to resort to using pictures of growth in infrastructure seen under Mamta Banerjee's leadership as his own. You can see him there, who changed his name to Yogi Adityanath, is very happily and proudly showing us the flyover in Calcutta as a sign of development in Bengal. At least now you are acknowledging, Mr. Ajay Bisht, that India's three-time chief minister has done great work and it's good that imitation is the best form of flattery. And now the newspaper which uh, carried this ad has apologized, claiming that they made the inadvertent mistake, saying that the wrong image was produced by the marketing department of the newspaper. And a 19-year-old medical aspirant died by suicide in Tamil Nadu, Salem district ahead of the medical entrance exam or the NEET exam today. The medical aspirant, identified as Dhanush, was the son of a farm labourer and he was found dead hours before the NEET exam was to take place. 
he had failed to clear the last two attempts at NEET. And soon after his death, the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin appealed to students not to lose hope and assured them that a bill against NEET would be brought out tomorrow. It is very sad and shocking that yet another life has been lost to this evil NEET in the state of Tamil Nadu. The Chief Minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin, has expressed his sadness that he is not able to save the child. It is with profound grief that NEET is still being here and a law is going to be introduced in the assembly tomorrow. And that's not all. With the NEET exams on across the country, hundreds of medical aspirants in the national capital missed their exam yesterday due to last-minute changes in testing centers and the weather. NDTV spoke to one such student who broke down in tears, recounting how she made it to the testing site just five minutes before the exam began after having to wade through severe waterlogging. She's now pleading with the government for a second chance and some more compassion for medical students. This, this is the ultimate opportunity we get to give the exam. This is the main thing. But uh, this opportunity also got we lost yesterday uh, and I can I cannot explain uh, since yesterday or I don't know this is a condition with many other students as well we cannot stop crying what has happened to us and I am requesting uh, our honorable prime minister and uh, all the higher authorities NB to please and please <laughs> please keep the exam one more time Some, someone was there at the center uh, uh, inside, on the opposite side of the gate. And so I said, sir, I have done one year COVID duty day and night. Uh, please consider this. Then that person says, to, to kya hua? COVID duty ki hai to. Uh, in this highly, highly competitive environment, people are doing suicides. They, they think uh, they, are, uh, uh, they are not capable of anything. They cannot do anything. This is the, everything. The NEET exam is everything. The Chief Justice was uh, the chief guest at an event to mark the 22nd Foundation Day of the Vivekananda Institute of Human Excellence uh, in Hyderabad and the 120th anniversary of the historic Chicago Address of uh, Swami Vivekananda. And he reminded us that how in that address Swami Vivekananda propagated the idea of tolerance and universal acceptance. Swami Vivekananda, in his address, propagated the idea of tolerance and universal acceptance. Today, in contemporary India, to pay heed to the words spoken by Swami Vivekananda as early as in 1893, he was prophetic. Long before the painful churning that took place in the subcontinent during the freedom struggle, resulting in framing of an egalitarian constitution of India, he advocated secularism as if he foresee the events to unfold. He firmly believed that the true essence of religion was the common good and tolerance. Religion should be above superstitions and rigidities. And finally, let's leave you with some tech news with all the advancements taking place with our smartphones and laptops. They also trickle down to appliances that help us with our daily chores. One such appliance is a vacuum cleaner. And we got the iRobot Roomba i3 Plus, a robo vacuum cleaner that cleans itself and the floor very well. And we reviewed it to see how practical it is. Enjoy and bye-bye. All user inputs equals error. According to Elon Musk, a piece of tech is considered to be at its pinnacle when it does not require any input from the user to serve its purpose. A product that we feel is the closest to this ideal is the iRobot Roomba i3+. Plus. It is a robot vacuum that cleans the entire room on its own and then empties itself on its own as well along with a whole lot of other features. How well does it clean? How well does it work? How does it work without any input from the user? Let's find out. The box comes with the robot vacuum itself and a dirt disposal dock. So the i3 Plus looks pretty simple. A slim cylindrical design 
The top has three buttons, a power button and a home button. The power button has a light around it. The entire body has a matte finish with an almost fabric-like finish near the edges on the top. The top has a sensor that can detect the dirt disposal dock and the front of the dock has a light touch sensor which helps with the i3 plus in detecting walls and furniture in front of it. While the top is smooth and simple, a lot of the magic of this robot vacuum lies underneath. The bottom has two long surface brushes and one edge sweeping brush which help the vacuum in sucking up all the dirt. The forklift sensors near the front prevent the sensor from falling off the stairs or the edge of a floor. There is also a floor sensor that enables the i3 plus to clean the floor in neat rows along the floor. It's sensors galore down here. But still, as smart as the design is, there is a flaw. The i3 plus may seem small but it's still 3.63 inches high. That makes it a bit hard for it to pass through under low furniture. As for what it can do under the furniture it can pass under, the Roomba i3 Plus cleans up well. It is fast and efficient. It starts in the middle of the floor and then goes onto the edges. It can also very well detect the dirt underneath. And if a spot is particularly hard to clean, it goes over it more than enough times to make sure it's clean. It can go on to clean for 90 minutes on a single charge. If it is out of battery before the cleaning job is complete, the i3 Plus simply goes back to its dock to charge up again. And once it has enough battery, it continues from the same spot it left the job. Checking the battery level, setting up the i3 Plus, scheduled cleaning jobs, everything can be done through the iRobot Home app available on all smartphones. After the cleaning is complete, the i3 Plus heads back to its dirt disposal dock to self-clean. The dirt disposal dock does well to take out all the dirt from the vacuum. All of the dirt that it collects gets transferred to a collection bag that comes pre-installed with the dock, along with an extra one in the box. It can hold 60 days worth of dirt, which can vary depending on how dirty the house is. Once it's filled, it can be taken out of the dock and replaced with a new one. The user can buy a pack of 3 for Rs 1660 from the iRobot site once they run out of the bags supplied in the box. And since the self-clean function works so well, the maintenance of the i3 Plus is pretty easy. As for everything the dirt disposal dog does, it is rather large. It stands 19 inches tall hence, it can't be simply hidden away in the room. But still another thing that can't be hidden away is the fact that just how well the iRobot Roomba i3 Plus works all on its own. It can perform its job without much input required by the user as long as it does not get tangled in a wire or under a chair. And the self-cleaning and charging capabilities works like a charm. For a price of Rs 59,900 it is certainly not affordable but it is well worth it for the people who need assistance in keeping their apartments clean whether or not they have the time to do it.